Hello everyone, how are you doing? I just wanted to show you, um, Mum bought me a tree, an apple tree, and I wanted to let you see it. I'm so looking forward to planting it and to see the, uh, the produce that comes from it, the delicious apples. Um, so we'll be doing that. Someday, this week hopefully, whenever it gets a bit nicer outside. We had a bit of a storm last night and I was up during the night and I could hear a bit of a rattling. But I think everything's okay. I was As, as Mum bought me the tree, I was just thinking about uh, the Garden of Eden and how God had made Adam and Eve... And he had placed them in the garden. And he gave them everything that they would need. And I was just looking it up. And Eden actually, in the translation of a Hebrew word, which means delight. A garden of delight. They had it all. They had every tree in the garden. They had um, all the fruit that they would ever need. They had everything that they would need in that garden. But there's one thing that God said not to do. There was a tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of good and evil. And God had said that they could eat freely of everything that was in the garden, but they weren't to eat of the tree of the good and evil. God had given them a free will it was up to them whether they obeyed it or not. And today we still have a free will whether we obey God or whether we disobey him. The only thing, there was someone else in the garden. The deceiver. Who got Eve to doubt what God had said would happen if they ate the forbidden fruit. The devil put a question in Eve's mind, did God say? Causing her to doubt in her mind, did God really say we would die if we ate the fruit off the tree? She milled this over in her mind, that she convinced herself the fruit looked good, it was fresh and delicious, so she ate it and she gave some to Adam. And their eyes were opened, physically to see they were naked, and spiritually they felt shame and guilt, and they hid from God in the garden. They had disobeyed God. Now they had to pay the consequences of being separated from God and thrown out of the garden. To Adam God said, all your life you will struggle to scratch a living. All your life you will sweat to produce food. And that's in Genesis 3, verses 15 onwards. To Eve, God said, you will bear children with intense pain and suffering. And we know this is the way life is today. But all is not lost because God had a plan to reconcile his people to himself so that once again we would be in right relationship with God. By sending his son, Jesus, to die on a cross, that was the penalty that was needed, needed to be paid for, for our sin. What a kind and merciful, gracious God that we have. Now all we have to do is accept him and what he has done. Romans 10, 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is no respecter of persons. This is for all people. And God has promised to give us eternal life. 
when we receive our Lord Jesus Christ into our life and yield to him so he can work in our life to change things. 1 Peter 4 verse 19 says, A few are suffering according to God's will. Keep on doing what is right and trust yourself to the God who made you, for he will never fail you. We just thank God for, for all that he's done, for sending Jesus so that we could be saved, so that we could have a home in heaven. A song is, uh, that I, I like listening to is Psalm 130, and it's sung by Shane and Shane. Thank you for listening, and God bless, and hopefully we'll see you all soon.